Dick Cheney. When you saw the uh, picture this weekend of the president shaking hands with an anti-American dictator, Hugo Chavez, a guy who a month earlier, by the way, referred to Obama as uh, President Obama as an ignoramus and had referred to President Bush as uh, the devil. Um, what did you think of that picture? Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't think much of it. I mean, I've seen, um, seen Hugo Chavez in, in operation before and Daniel Ortega down in, in uh, Nicaragua. These are people who operate in our hemisphere but who don't uh, believe in and aren't supportive of uh, the basic fundamental principles and policies that most of us in this hemisphere here do. We believe in democracy. Um, nobody would ever accuse Hugo Chavez of being somebody committed to democracy. The, um, basically, uh, the, the position we took in the uh, Bush administration was to ignore him. I think that was the right thing to do. Is, this, is there something wrong maybe with the President of the United States laughing and joking with a, a dictator that has been so anti-American? Is that a what? That is that image a bad image for the country? Well, I uh, I think it's not helpful. I think it's uh, important. You've got millions of people all across South America who are watching how we respond. If they see an American president sort of cozying up to somebody like uh, Daniel Ortega or um, Chavez, I think it's not helpful. I think it it sort of sets the wrong standard. I think uh, we. Uh, you know, we need to be um, good neighbors, but that doesn't mean that we should not distinguish between those that are working hard or helpful or doing uh, good work like Arribe in Colombia, Calderon in Mexico. Um, I think, you know, they need to be held. Propped up. President's got to provide leadership, and I, I don't want to be in a position where you don't, uh, you don't interact with your adversaries. I think you do need to do that, but I think it's got to be done properly, it's got to be done in the right conditions, and it's got to be made clear that you do distinguish between good guys and bad guys, between those who believe in democracy or friends and allies of the United States and those who don't, and you don't treat them equally. I want to go back to the issue of interrogations and the releasing of the, the memos that gave out specific information. Even Leon Panetta said it was dangerous. Four former CIA directors said it was dangerous. Uh, they urged the Obama administration not to do it. Why, why do you think they would do that in spite of that recommendation, if only for political reasons? And secondly, why is it important uh, that those inter interrogations took place? I mean, the ones they were talking about was sleep deprivation, water boarding, um, putting insects into small confined areas and, and telling them that they were deadly insects. Why, why were those tactics needed, necessary, and why do you think they continue to be necessary? Well, <clears throat> I'll try to keep it short, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot there, Sean, obviously. It's a key, key question. In the aftermath of 9-11, with uh, 3,000 dead Americans, 16 acres in downtown New York, devastated, big hole in the Pentagon, um, we didn't know a lot about al-Qaeda. Uh, we didn't have the body of knowledge we have today. But uh, it was a relatively unknown group. You know a little bit about it, but not a lot. We also, in the aftermath of 9-11, within a very short period of time, uh, were faced with the anthrax attacks. What we did know about al-Qaeda was that they were trying to acquire nuclear weapons. Um, so we had serious concerns, if I can put it like that. In short order, we were faced with the possibility of the AQ Khan network, the black market selling of nuclear weapons technology, the enrichment facilities, the feedstock and weapons design by AQ Khan out of Pakistan to the Libyans, the Iranians, and uh, the North Koreans. And obviously one of the questions that come up then is the uh, AQ Khan in Pakistan with this technology and capability dealing with uh, Osama bin Laden. Now, he may be in Pakistan too. All those kinds of issues meant we had to collect good first-rate intelligence about what was going on so we could prepare and defend against it. And that's what we did. We, um, with the inter intelligence programs, the terror surveillance program, as well as the, the uh, interrogation program, we set out to collect that kind of intelligence. It worked. It's been enormously valuable in terms of saving lives, preventing another mass casualty attack against the United States. One of the things that I find a little bit disturbing about this recent disclosure 
is they put out the legal memos, uh, the memos that the CIA got from the Office of, of the Legal Counsel. But they didn't put out the memos that show the success of the effort. And there are reports that uh, show specifically um, what we gained as a result of this activity. They have not been declassified. I formally ask that they be declassified now. I, did, uh, I haven't announced this uh, up till now. I haven't talked about it. But I know specifically of reports that I read, that I saw, that lay out what we learned through the interrogation process and uh, what the consequences were for the country. And uh, I've now formally asked the CIA to uh, take steps to declassify those memos so we can lay them out there and the American people have a chance to see what we obtained and what we learned and how good the intelligence was, as well as to see this debate over the, uh, the legal opinions. George Tenet had actually said we got more from those interrogations than we would ever have gotten from the FBI, the CIA, or the NSA combined. But you're saying that they're not telling the whole story. Well, I think uh, if you're going to have the whole, if we're going to have this debate, you know, let's have an honest debate. And we'll have more of my exclusive interview with former Vice President Cheney tomorrow night. Now, here's a preview.